All right. Okay. Welcome to Handlebar Workshops. We're in the craft room today and we're talking hats. I like hats. I have lots of hats. See? We have lots of hats. Hats that we're looking to convert, hats that are done, costume hats that have been modified, itty bitty hats, lots of hats. I like hats. Let me show you my favorite hat. This is my favorite hat. I love this hat. It's very fun. It's very festive. I get a lot of compliments on this hat. There is a problem though. This hat is an oven, which is great in cold weather, but not so much in the hot weather. This past summer, I got to heat stroke at an event, mainly because I couldn't cool off. The rest of my outfit though was nice and cool and breezy, but the hat just kind of cooked my head. It's the hottest piece of all of my accessories. The temperature that is created inside of this foam created hat gets so hot, the sweat will build up and drip down and ruin my makeup in hot weather. So this is definitely an indoor hat or a cool weather hat. This was the first hat that we tr attempted. Again, it is a yoga mat. And um, so we had two. And my husband did not like the hat as much. So I covered it and turned it into this, which you will see in pictures. Now, to show the technique, I am going to change this hat. Today we're going to turn this into a more ventilated hot weather top hat. Here we go. So this seam here is on, I'm going to make this the back. So I'm going to call this the front of the hat. All right, we're taking the ruler, we're gonna put it in the very middle of what looks like the very middle of the front of the hat. Then simply, we're gonna be taking our marker and just drawing on the lines. So now you notice I did two. This is my center front and I did one to the right of it. So now I'm going to do one to the left of it and I'm going to then, so that way this is definitely my middle. I don't really care if I end up with an odd sized pillar on the back. I'm not too concerned about them being absolutely perfect. I'm just using the ruler as a spacing guideline because once we start covering things up and wrapping over, it's you're not going to notice that they're slightly different sizes or not completely straight. I'm noticing as I get around to the back, I'm starting to get an angle to my line. So if I line the ruler up with the bottom of the hat, it's not quite straight. So I'm going to start angling and making the wider at the top as I go around the back so that I can get my ruler straight up and down. All right, so now I'm at that seam there. And I'm concerned that when I go to cut along here that I'm gonna rip open that seam. So we're just gonna make that, leave that as a extra large back pillar for support. But I don't like that there's more on this side than on this side, but you know what? It's not going to be noticeable because no one's going to be able to see that seam after we're done. So the dilemma now is how do we cut them out? Well, my plan is just to take my awesome, super awesome, super cool, <laughs> super sharp sewing scissors 
and just kind of stabbing it in and cutting up the line. Now I'm going to go around and cut out every single one of these lines. All right, I've got out all my lines all the way around. We're going to leave this one, cut out these two, leave those two, cut out the next two all the way around. Down here by the seam, you know what, I'm just gonna rip it right off and see what happens from the seam to get a nice clean bottom. Eh, clean enough. All right, so far so good. I know it looks silly that you can see through it, but we're going to work with it. We're just going to push forward with my envisioning of what this hat is going to do. Okay. We're going to be covering it with craft foam. You don't have to get, if your hat's going to be black, you don't have to have black craft foam. You can just get the most cost-effective craft foam that you can. And I'm going to cut out some squares, rectangles, and triangles out of this. Just making a big, silly patch. You don't have to measure anything out. It does not have to be exact. These are to create those panels uh, that look like metal riveted on panels on the hat. Now, we're going to want to make some smaller ones than the other hat because we do have to go around these pillars. We're going to have to completely wrap around and have them going around. So we're going to want some smaller pieces as well as the larger pieces for the top. Again, you don't have to measure for this because it's not going to be an exact. You want it to kind of look like it's a haphazard pieces of metal that you found and assembled onto a hat. Now you can go exact if that's your thing. Not my thing. I don't feel it's necessary to take those extra steps. and yes, they are flying everywhere, but it's okay. I have some triangles, some squares, some smaller triangles, some big squares, little squares, little tiny triangles. So just all this random shapes. Now I was noticing from the top, it kind of looks like a gear, which is kind of cool. So I'm actually going to leave that. I was thinking about cutting out something. Maybe I'll just cut a hole in the middle so it makes it look more like a sprocket. So I'm just going to take this cap and put it in the middle here. I'm going to trace around it and I'm going to cut that hole out as if it's the center of this gear. So this hole, I might actually make to, need to make a little bit bigger because when, when we put all of our little pieces around, let's see, let's take a little triangle. So we've got our square, we've got a triangle. When we start putting our little pieces, it's going to narrow down the hole a little bit. So I'm going to make this hole just a little bit bigger. Okay, that should get plenty of ventilation. First things first, I need to coat a section of this top with the contact cement. And I also need to coat the back side of these little panels that I cut out with the contact cement. Side note, do this where you have plenty of ventilation or else the fumes are going to make you very dizzy. You want to work in patches because if the contact glue or contact cement gets too dry, it won't do its contact thing. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take one of these pieces and kind of lay it down. Now I want to use this piece so that it covers this corner. So I want to stick it against the front and you can see it's already sticking fold it over pressing it down all along the way come up to the middle here and we're going to push it down into the middle there 
So there is our first panel put on. Bent over, don't worry about this lumpiness, perfectly fine. One thing I learned about the other hat, or while I was doing the other hat, is you don't want to get too much contact cement on here where you're going to be painting so that you don't end up with lines of it that don't take the paint the same way. So now I'm going to be coating each individual pillar and then taking a panel to cover each one of these pillars. I'm going to want to overlap at the bottom to create that seamless look. It's completely covered. You can see some of my wet glue sticking out, a couple patches inside. Once your adhesive is completely dry, you may see some lifting. That's okay, you can always go back and re-glue that down, press it down. So once it's all dry and ready to go, you don't want any tackiness, definitely don't want tackiness of the glue when you go to paint. I am going to cover it completely with black craft paint. I want to do it in a matte finish, not a glossy, because the glossy will prevent the future rub and buff stuff from sticking. Also, you're going to want to really lay it on thick since the foam is going to absorb a lot of the paint and you actually want that to happen for depth. This is what it will look like after the one good solid coat of black paint on the outside. You want that matte finish you want to have it completely covered as best as possible. When mixing your epoxy, you want to make sure you're in the great outdoors or plenty of ventilation. The fumes will make you sick. So here we have our completely covered and painted hat. I have glued down any loose spots and I'm ready to make my epoxy dots. So first things first, we're going to take a skewer. You can take a match stick as well, but I just like these kebab skewers. They're good for mixing as well as making the dots. You gather up your epoxy on the end. You need it a little thick on the thicker side, not too runny. And the epoxy dots that we're adding are going to be our rivets. So we're aiming it down, making sure we don't have too much on the skewer. And we just start putting our little dots. I'm going to start on the top, just making little dots, little tiny dots wherever we think a uh, rivet would go. So you will need at least an entire container of the two-part epoxy. You're probably going to need two bottles of the contact cement to attach all these. When your dots are completely dry, it is now it is time to put another coat of paint. So you're going to do your craft paint and just completely slop on another coat of paint. Make sure to get it on really, really thick. The hat is completely covered with black paint. I have turned it out a bunch of different angles, looking for any of the remaining blue. I don't see any. All of my epoxy dots have been covered with the matte black paint. I am going to start rubbing buffing. So I am going to go over, and since I'm wanting to do kind of a multi-toned look, I'm going to do some of these in a different shade. So I have three different shades, maybe four, that I'm going to be doing all of these little panels. Usually you would take the cap off and squeeze a little bit out onto your finger, but so just a tiny bit came out, which is okay, but 
um, it's popping out the bottom here. So from this point on, I'm going to be doing this backwards and point and squeezing it out the bottom. We're going to do this panel right here in that rub and buff, that little bit that I put on my finger. And you'll see what happens is the little epoxy dots end up not completely getting covered all the way around them. And I like that because it looks like dirty metal or aged metal. Squeeze a little more out. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use my little scratch, scrap piece of craft foam here where I was testing out all my colors because I squeezed way too much out and I just want a little bit. So now I'm going to hit this panel right here. Tiny bits. And that panel goes down and over and under. Here's the hat. I went and did a whole bunch of this color. And you can see how I just did certain panels. So next, we're going to try doing some panels in the European gold. I'm going to dot it on a bit here and there. just to get it evenly distributed, and then just start rubbing and buffing. So I'm going to move on to antique gold to add some panels of antique gold. So if we pull in here, you can see how this one's just a little more golden I guess than this one so I'm not going to do too much of that because there isn't that big of a contrast All right. so here we are we have our three different tones and now I'm going to go in and add gold rush to some places so why not let's put it right there I'm going to do almost all of the remaining black spots with the gold rush. We're going to be applying the gold leaf as my final color. I'll go over any remaining black spots and I'm going to start using a brush. This is an old eyeliner brush that has a nice fine tip from hopefully for me to get some edges. This is my completely painted hat. With the ventilation. I painted the inside just gold. So you can see all those panels. Lots of air venting going on here. Large air vent in the back. This is technically the front, but I could wear it that way if I wanted to. Ventilation in the top. It doesn't need a sash, but I might still do one. Or I can just wear it like this. I can wear it with decorations. I could put some more stuff on it. Here's the finished product. All done. So you notice you can't see through it right now, but with all my hair up there, now you can see the light going through the window. It's all ventilated. You can see the hole up here. I can even put my hair in pigtails, have them coming out the sides. So many possibilities. I also was thinking, and I'll show you, I have these, this wire lighting. So you could have a lights inside. And I was thinking you could put um, some kind of craft paper in here too to do a liner with the lights in there. There's the hat. All I did was put the piece of paper in there. It's just a piece of the scrapbooking paper. It comes in this cute little tube. I just trimmed it a little shorter so it would fit in there. It's not adhesived in there at all. It's just laying in there. Put my light up colors in there and when I push the button, lights up.
different angle. I'm a beacon of light. Hey, I could be my own lighthouse. When I'm in a crowd, if people can't find me, all I have to do is turn my hat on, and what you hear is my chair. I need some oil. <laughs> Hope you had a fun time watching. I had fun making. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like link, and the alerts bell to know when we post more videos. Hope to see you soon!